Hello and welcome to All My Art and Soul. I'm Michelle Holden, the artist behind the channel. And this week we are going to be finishing up four paintings start to finish in part three. So as you can see, I like to show them all together and I'm introducing um, my techniques. There's the stencil for those small dots. They are hexagonal hexagons, I believe. They're just very tiny. And my number five with a stencil, which I'm using throughout these four pieces. Um, I've added the light blue, as I've said. On the palette is um, Hansa Yellow Light, Yellow Oxide, Turquoise, Nickel Azo Gold. So I just love putting in the sections and I love these tools that I'm using. So if you haven't watched the two previous videos, please check them out. I will leave a card in the upper right hand corner. And um, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel so I can keep going and keep creating great content and um, moving on to larger canvases more of a series that I'm starting to do because winter is on its way and that's when I want to do most of my larger work. And I do miss my art, my abstract art journal pages. So I did one today and it'll be up next week um, just as a break in between the next series of paintings that I'm going to be showing you. So I hope you're still art journaling. I hope you're still affirmation art journaling. And don't forget to check out that series of 30 videos and you can create and follow along or watch. Um, don't forget to check out my uh, Facebook group. All of these links are in the comments below and hop on over to my new shop as I am. And I haven't uh, done added any more recently but I am as we approach the Christmas season. So there's some really cool uh, art products there and um, just check them out. So let's get back to these four paintings, which I started, taped together, made marks, took them apart, and now I'm working on them as individuals, but yet a series. You can do this with six, I've done it with nine, and I've done it with 12, and it is really, really fun. So using the makeup sponge as a great tool to add different values or colors of this number five in different ways, because I'm, you know, keeping those differences, but yet uh, some of them, um, the one below, the, the black five, I think that would have looked better and I still might change it to a black five rather than the blue because it would be continue that black mark on the left over to the right. So, and maybe I would fade it out to lighter. Who knows what might work? So I'll, I'll definitely keep that in mind. So loving these uh, student uh, stamping tools that I just got at the local dollar store and they're so much fun mixing some of the parchment and don't forget the colors are in the comments below um, you just have to read down and find where I love to put that sort of last I love to put my links first and check out those colors of course these are acrylics the paper is I've trimmed it down to exactly 8 inch by 8 inch square so I can keep them with mat, or I can attach them to a cradle board and then a floater frame. But I, I think for these, I might get them matted and then they'll, they'll appear larger, big wide mats, at least four inches going around. So that'll be a 12 by 12. So that would be awesome. So here we go. We're going to put some blue on the squiggly lines and in hindsight which is a wonderful thing but it's always a great learning tool for your next series or your next painting just to keep in mind maybe you want to go darker maybe i wanted to pay attention more um, and i don't know if i even like the placement of that number five but what i do like 
is that it wasn't a very high contrast. It covers up those squiggly marks. So I may even go with another stencil on top of that. And instead of erasing it, painting over all those lines that I love, I'll just push it back one layer by putting a very subtle, I think I'll go light value this time using my organic dots because I notice a couple of these have the organic dots that I love, but in a light, it would look really cool. So you still see everything, it's just pushed back. So I will definitely give that a try. And the first thing that came into my mind is, well, why don't I continue the lines over top of the five so I don't lose the energy of those. And I do darken them a little bit more and the more I darken them, the better they turn out. So um, I think that's a good thing. And I will be um, zooming in on one painting at a time here coming up. So please stay to the end and see what happens. And because it's a lot closer, there's better lighting. And I zoom in my camera even more when I work uh, for you, for the viewer, when I'm working one piece at a time. So right now, this is just so everybody can see. And... I like a square, um, and you don't need to have it square to rotate the paint, the abstract painting around and just get different directions and just, so you're just not stuck in this one position. And it's amazing what turns out if you keep rotating, you end up back where you were and you go, wow, you know, some things happen that you could never have planned. So here we go. We're going to zoom in and nice so i um have found some older dictionaries which i love need to find some more and i just was glancing through the other day and i found the lovely botanical diagrams anything uh, geometry botanical um, just really interesting ancient history depending on what it is so I've moved it over more to the left. As you can see where I'm showing you with the end of this paintbrush, there's the line. So there's a vertical line and you can see all the lines that that's what I'm talking about to catch going across. And now there's um, a different quadrant on the top, the right. And I love how the one, two, three, four is cropped off which then, ooh, five, you know what I mean? It's just sort of, just subtle meanings, you know? And who knows, I'm leaving it open, I'm leaving it ambiguous, but with a little push or a direction with the symbols and numbers that I love to work with. And I noticed that, wow, the orange marker, the Posca marker, would look really cool if I went over that text and notice how it pushed it back even more. And it just needed those marks, those lines. And there's nothing better that contrasts shapes is line. So I'm, I'm starting to remember that more without too much thinking. It's more of a reaction, a reaction, sorry. And um, building up my, just my mark making uh, filing cabinet. Okay, that black is really black. And I noticed so I took my awl, which isn't the sharpest. I might have had better luck with um, that big needle, the canvas needle that I use. Or you, I could have spritzed it a little bit with alcohol on a, on a rag and lifted it up. 70% um, alcohol for, you know, first aid, you know, your, your, your alcohol that you use for many different things. It works really good at lifting acrylic paint. But of course, the layer underneath, you wanna make sure you put a, um, a gloss, a, a gel medium. It doesn't have to be gloss, sorry. Just a gel medium. I like to use the heavy because it's just, you know, it's just a thicker layer. So then I alleviate this issue of too much black and this is called gradating. So I'm gradating from the left to the right. 
I could have uh, not a lot to go to the light blue, but maybe that would have looked good. And this is now uh, with the turquoise, with a lot of water on my brush, this is what we call glazing. And I really like, just wanted to pick up the shape of that five. And now you see your eye comes down. It goes to the all the way to the right a bit because of those black little dash lines and the circles that are vertical on the right. But now I think we have that motion of the eyes going around. And this one just needed this spritz of, I think it's black. And it's done. I don't want to go any further. If I do, it'll be over painting or it would get too busy. And that's why I'm choosing to just stop. In a few days, I might do a very tiny thing. But these days, I try to avoid it and trust my instincts as, nope, it's done. If something catches my eye when I'm going by my table where I'll leave them out, maybe. But I think these are pretty good. Loving the color shaper, especially my small one when I'm working on smaller work, such as these. I'm really loving that vertical black edge. And with the, with the scraping through it. So then I decide, okay, what if I made some more of those? See, now the eye's going up but really spread them apart more just to pick up a bit of that orange across the way. I think it works. Now I'm repeating. There's repetition of these climbing like ladders or I don't know. It's just this thing that just, I don't even know where these symbols come. Well, I do, but um, <clears throat> it's interesting how they show up. There's something that I would love to hear from you. Um, what are some shapes, lines, symbols, marks that you like? Not that you don't like, because there's always ones that we, oh, I'm always doing that same thing. I want to do something different. The ones that you like, uh, what are you, what are you doing? And um, why you like them? It's always neat to hear this stuff. And especially for our beginners out there who have just discovered my channel, hello, welcome aboard, welcome to the journey. And, um, and also some of you who have been here, um, well, this is, I would still consider this a younger channel. This is only in my second year, one of my 140 something videos. And, uh, I am not, I intend to do this and better and more. And as I'm learning, this is, this is just amazing. There we go. So I put that in because I wanted the edge to show up more. Liking it, it did cover some of that really neat orangey pink stuff. I'm okay with that parchment paint with that paper but it's still too light and it looks like I was covering something so I never like that so much but I'll let it dry maybe I'll mix it and match to the paper a lot better and it will dry darker dark dries lighter light dries darker just keep that in mind so yeah so, so these are really, really building up with their layers. Gee, I love that five. It is so nice, and I love how I cropped it. Wow. And really liking that I use those circles. They do end up there uh, vertically. Uh, I trim down the paper a bit, and it seems to be the solution. And I like how they're random. They're sort of in a row. It's like alignment. Um, anomalies. Um, as you can see, there's all sorts of interesting stuff going on. Um, and that seems to be what my um, abstract journaling pages are. And these little guys. I, I love the butterfly. That was from the same encyclopedia. And I love the black and white, the text. Um, just that 
Um, those symbols from that antique kind of faded paper um, is an old manual, an old manual. So I didn't like that, but I liked when I lifted it, how it lightened up slightly because I wanted that circle to be similar to the background next to the five for some reason. I wanted it to be the same, um, the same origin, so to speak. And then of course I'm realizing, yes, let's do more of these, but in a different way. And loving that upper black corner that's all scratched with the rectangle in and just that peak of a anomaly or circle with other circles. Yes, this one's done for sure. Okay, one thing you'll notice as you progress, you're getting stuck less. I didn't say you're not gonna ever get stuck because that doesn't change because you're always growing and evolving, right? Trying to do something new. But I notice when I'm doing these, it, these are very complex, I would say, but now I want them this way without being too busy. So I'm getting there quicker and liking the marks and hopefully having more authentic marks and shapes and um, making notes of the things that are working. And I probably should, not that I have yet. Um, first of all, I have to title these things. And uh, I think we need to talk about that. We need to talk about how we title abstract work. I don't know if I've talked about it before. I have reams and reams of, of notebooks uh, researching how to title. And I think I came up with my system that works for me. And uh, it's too long and complex to get into right now. But um, I, I'll just briefly, I start with the feeling maybe a word or a symbol or what what was it and you there's there's a lot of reflection what is the main energy or message or whatever that's going on and this uh, and then and then i start from there then i use the thesaurus and poetry and all sorts of things just to get phrases and then once i muckle on to something then i know and uh, off i go so this is glazing, and I absolutely love nickel as a gold for glazing. And did you see that stained the paper, punched up this orange, and now with that smaller ratio of orange, it made the blue look even more blue. So I'm showing you, I changed, remember I was talking about that, I wasn't sure. So I love it's like, a, I love too many things. And I don't know if a lot of you are like that. I like nar things that also almost have a story. They're almost narrative, but they're still ambiguous. So this is this sort of energy cloud thing. I don't, I don't know. I, I guess it is. And then I like my black dots and I realized I needed to just change the um, underneath dark top light there's there's a I'm picky with my clouds or whatever this is yes so where's the light coming from behind to the left to the right and then I'm using the Posca marker and sometimes I do more of a drop shape and there it is this little story going on so then I thought, okay, could use a bit more. And I love how this little circle is hiding in, in amongst its family of orange. Then I just accentuate it a bit more and bring up a more similar strong orange that's on the right over here on the left with those lines and just 
push those circles back. I really like that. So now it extends more to an, like an L. And notice the paint did dry. It went closer to the paper color. So I'll leave it for now. Oh, my favorite combo, pink and orange. So then it's cool. It's too much. And I know if I use a damp J cloth, it's just going to just stain and just a few little marks are left and that's all I wanted because I didn't want it so strong. The contrast was too much. And I'm loving that pink. So I thought, okay, if I love the pink, the very light pink, maybe I should have went with the stronger one, which I think I do, yeah. And I just needed some more marks or lines throughout this little area just to carry through. But this one's done. So there's the first one. So I'm just showing each one. I'm going to put them together. There's that one. And so I, I really hope you've enjoyed this series. I have. It's like a little journey for each little series. Love the five stencil. And uh, here are some images, close-ups of each one. And yes, there's French. There's all sorts of interesting texts that I love to use. And the colors, the marks, the texture. Don't forget to start your pieces with that gesso. It also helps the paper withstand more scrubbing. I'm really loving this one. The combination of softness hard edge, soft edge, and text, and my favorite. So um, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share, and I will see you in the next video.